you know, let's, let's dwell on that a little. You see, mythological tales are a powder keg for filmmakers, even for writers. You feel tales like Ramayan cannot withstand a, you know, sort of a reimagined narration. Case in point, the Adi Purush controversy on how Ravan was imagined. So kids, you know what I think happens, and I, I will not speci- uh, comment on this specific case because frankly I haven't seen the movie, I haven't seen the t- uh, teaser as well, so I don't know the nature of uh, the debates that are happening. But uh, at a broader level, the way I see it, uh, if uh, an artist uh, writes and promotes with respect, uh, controversies don't happen. You know, whether they are uh, interpretations of the Ramayana or interpretations of the Mahabharata or interpretations of the Puranas. We can of course see examples of this in ancient times. For example, Bhasa's Pancharatra, uh, you know, one of the greatest Sanskrit playwrights ever, Bhasa's Pancharatra, reimagined a very significant part of the Mahabharata completely. And in fact, the war didn't happen in Bhasa's uh, interpretation. And it's one of the greatest classics. It remains alive to this day. Goswami Tulsi Jasti's uh, Ram Charit Manas doesn't have the, uh, you know, the Uttar Khand, uh, which is of course there in the Valmiki Rama, and that's a very significant change. Um, in the modern day, look at movies, you know, so if uh, if someone uh, suggested to an Indian filmmaker, I've quoted this example a few times, if someone suggested to an Indian filmmaker to shoot a scene where the main lead actor breaks the base of a shivling mm. and then carries it on his shoulder, and then places it under a waterfall. Most Indian filmmakers would say have you gone mad. Mm. Uh, but in the hands of a genuine devotee, uh, such as Raja Mauliji, mm. uh, it becomes one of the most iconic scenes of Indian cinema Bahubali. in Bahubali. Mm. Mm. Uh, I think uh, Indians have a heart large enough to uh, accept different truths. As long as the intentions are good, as long as it is made with respect. And another example, if I may say, so are my books. You know, my books aren't really secrets. Uh, they've sold, uh, by Lord Shiva's grace, up 6 million uh, copies. My publishers tell me that the uh, uh, Shiva trilogy is the fastest selling uh, in Indian publishing history and the Ram Chandra series is the second fastest selling book series. Mm-hmm. You won't find any controversies uh, around me. So my submission is that if an artist uh, writes and promotes with respect, Indians can see those intentions. And then it's not really yeah. a powder cake at all. There's no controversy. Mm. Okay. But you know, as a writer of uh, the Shiva trilogy, and given the fact that Ravan was a devout Shiv Bhakt, uh, how do you imagine Ravan? And how should Ravan be imagined? Because you know, in this, through the course of this debate, a lot of people said that the, you know, this is an insult in the Sanatan Dharm. You have... Uh, uh, you have villainized Ravan uh, way beyond how he needs to be villainized. So I want to ask you, uh, is he the quintessential villain for you in your in your version of the mythology? You know, this thing of uh, hero-villain is a rather modern uh, Western concept and they are very loaded words. You know, the, 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 uh, the translation of uh, hero and villain in Sanskrit Nayak and Khalnayak don't actually mean uh, those things. You know, Khalnayak doesn't exactly translate as villain. Nayak means that who carries the story forward, the character who carries the story forward, and Khalnayak is the one who distracts from the story moving forward. So it's not as loaded, right, as uh, hero and villain. Hmm. And if you read the ancient versions of the Ramayana, look, I, I've read many versions uh, of the Ramayana, you know, or uh, been told uh, them through my. Uh, family, Valmiki Ramayana, Ram Charitmanas, uh, uh, Kamba Ramayana, uh, uh, Kritibashi Ramayana, Adhubud Ramayana, Anand Ramayana, there are so many. Now, most of the versions of the Ramayana don't uh, see Ravan as a pure monster. But they never show him as a hero either. They show him in a nuanced way. That, uh, of course, he had bad points and those bad points are spoken of. Uh, you know, that... And we all know them, you know, no control over his ego, no control over his anger, no control over his desires. Mm. Uh, but his good points are also spoken of, you know, the fact that uh, he was uh, a very knowledgeable uh, man. Uh, he was a master of uh, the Vedas. Uh, he was a brilliant musician. He was a fierce warrior. Mm. Those good points are also spoken of. And as you said, rightly, he was a devout uh, worshipper of, of Lord Shiva. Mm. 
he had the blessings of uh, of lord shiva so uh, he, our ancestors saw things in a far more nuanced uh, uh, way and perhaps we could learn from our ancestors on how to see things